Welcome to the Lingam Fuller webinar for the beginning of 2020-2021. My name is Anne-Marie Gunter. I'm in the bottom right-hand corner waving hello with my Bitmoji. And welcome everyone. Sutli Stocks on the left of the screen from the ESL Title III team. Today, our agenda is direct and to the point. We have an hour. Uh, we're gonna start with a welcome and some logistics for today's broadcast. Then we're gonna talk about introducing students to Linguafolio since it's the beginning of the year. And we're gonna focus on two biography components from Linguafolio um, that you can use in the beginning of the year or any time, but that also connect to cell or social and emotional learning core competencies. Those two are the how do I learn and the language activities um, components. And we'll have those available for you, and they're already posted as classroom materials as well. Then we'll talk about accessing Linguafolio classroom materials in general, uh, followed by enrolling in professional development or PD training for Linguafolio. And then at the end, we'll look at any final questions, um, talk about some opportunities coming up, and then do a wrap up. That's the plan for today's broadcast. Here is our NCDPI Linguafolio team. As I said, I am Anne-Marie Gunter, the World Languages Consultant. And we should introduce to Dr. Christy Day. She is our section chief or our supervisor over both Sally and myself. Um, and her work includes ESL, uh, World Languages, and English Language Arts, or ELA. And Sutli Stocks from the ESL Title III team, and I support the Eastern regions in the state, but I am part of the NCDPI Lingua Folio team statewide. So we're going to continue. Um, thank you again for joining us today. We appreciate that you took some time. We know how this time is very challenging for everyone. Uh, with all the different re-entry plans and how you have started working with your students. So we appreciate that. We're going to use, let me see, okay. We are going to use WebEx today and we have um, the chat and the participants panel. So you will see who has joined and you will be able to chat and add some comments and questions. So we're going to monitor the chat. So I will ask you to please, every time you send a question or a comment, uh, you select all participants. So we all can see and um, be able to collaborate and network and also answer any questions that you may have. And then we have Mentimeter. That's the polling tool that we are going to use today. And briefly, we're going to share that Mentimeter is a polling tool. We have set a couple of questions. And the idea is that you are going to use the easy way to use Mentimeter is with your, with your mobile phone, but you can open another window if this is what you want uh, on your device. But the easiest way is on your mobile phone, on your smartphone. You just type Mentimeter.com, and I'm going to share that link on the chat because our next slide is going to be about this. But please be. Uh, aware that we are not sharing any personal information when we use Mentimeter. We are not asking you to download any information, any app or register. This is a free app that you just enter menti.com in your device and then you need to enter a code. And it's a six or seven digit uh, number and we're gonna give you that number so you don't need to worry about uh, providing any personal information. So. We want to share this because it's a really cool tool that you can also use for your different events, PLCs with your teachers when you go to your districts and share uh, what you have learned about Linguafolio. So we're going to continue to the next slide. And Hang I on, uh, sorry, just a second. Well, we're still on WebEx controls. I see a lot of questions in the chat box about can you see me here and that kind of thing. Yes, we can see all participants. Right now we have 39 folks online, so that's great. And um, when you want to enter a message, um, go ahead and send it out to all panelists so that we can see it and share it as we need to. I just see a couple questions there that I wanted to address. 
Okay, so we don't have all participants. We only have all panelists. That's right. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move to the next slide. And we have our first Mentimeter, our poll. And the question we're going to ask once we enter the code is, why did you join the broadcast today? Are you here? So I'm going to share the link in the chat. So you can access if you want to do it on your computer, but remember that you can do it also on your phone. Just open a Google search, type in menti.com. And then you are going to have these options. You're going to say you have joined today's broadcast because you want to access some PD for ESL, English as a second language. You want to access PD for word languages. You want to ask a question about Linguafolio, connect with other educators, earn one contact hour for license renewal, gather information to share with others, or learn about new resources. So once you enter your mentee and you enter the code, you will be able to select all those options that apply to you. So let's see if this is working and if you want Anne Marie to share this the Menti slide so we can see as we enter the responses. I think if you click on um, the link in the slide, Sally, it'll go right to it. All right. Okay, so why did you join the broadcast today? So remember the code for this if you just join. And we hope that everyone can access, so we're going to give you a few more seconds. Remember, the code for this poll is 2145920, and then you will have the different options, and you can select as many as you want. Okay, we have, let me see how many participants do we have. We have 17 responses. And I have a comment in the, the chat box that this is cool. They like the Mentimeter. Um, you might want to refresh the screen, Sally. I think more people have responded to the poll. Let's see. I don't know why it's not updating. Okay. That's great. 27 participants. How many participants do we have uh, that have joined us today, Emily? We have 40 on the line right now. Oh, now 41. All right. Okay. So remember, you don't need to download anything. Just open on your phone the browser and type menti.com and then you can access. Okay. We have 28 people. If we get two more votes, we're going to close this poll. So let me refresh and see if we get those two. Okay. Two more people. Maybe we are struggling. Don't worry. You want to uh, take, just type that, enter the code. We're going to give you the code. You don't need to register or open an account or anything. So let's see if we get, I'm going to refresh one more time. And then we move on. There you go. Okay. So I guess this is not updated or we have a very shy crowd. Remember Mentimeter is anonymous. So we won't know who you are. We just want to get uh, some, uh, a better idea of who has joined us today. So it's anonymous, you don't need to worry about anything. Okay. So Sally, why don't you go back uh, real quickly to the tab with the slide on it. There are some folks asking maybe who just joined about how you get to it. So you can show them that you go just to menti.com and type in the code right. number and they should be able to access the poll. Perfect. So yes, the code is 2142920. And then you will be able to enter your response. I'm going to go back to our poll and see if we make it to our 30 responses and then we can continue. Did we break the internet?
Okay, so we have 20% of participants want to learn about new resources. Thank you. And we got 34. We went above what our goal was 30 and we got four more answers. So thank you for participating and joining us today. We have 20% of our participants want to gather some more information to share with others. Um, I see we have 19% ESL teachers and 15% were languages, uh, were language teachers who have joined today. And then a few of you want to ask a question about Linguafolio and connect with other educators. And also we all want to earn one contact hour of license renewal. So we're gonna go back to our slide deck and I'll see if Anne-Marie can share with us some information about license uh, renewal when we get this contact hour. Yes, some of you indicated you had an interest in that. And um, all of our broadcasts from NC the NCDPI Linguafolio team do get you um, a certificate of participation for one contact hour or 0 0.1 CEUs for license renewal. Um, that certificate will come in an email as an attachment um, about two weeks after our broadcast today. So look for it then. Okay, thank you. And I'm gonna move this slide. I think you can take control again. Okay. Now we're going to share about our biography components today. There you go. All right, great. We do want to talk to you today, since it's the beginning of the school year, about introducing students to Linguafolio. Now, some of you may be very experienced with Linguafolio already and maybe have that information down, but some of you may be brand new or perhaps you're just looking for new ideas in general. So let's talk about this um, in the form of the five W and H questions, always a favorite when you're teaching language. First of all, when you think about introducing students to Linguafolio, you need to think about who are your learners. Linguafolio can be used with any learners, K through 12 or even beyond that into post-secondary or professional work. I want you to picture right now who your specific language learners are. Maybe it's a particular class or grade level, or maybe you work with a number of students across um, different schools. It's all kinds of arrangements. But really focus in on one of your learning groups. Maybe it's a particular course. And don't forget, that you are also a language learner who can use Linguafolio. One of the most powerful things you can do to help your students is to have a Linguafolio for yourself. We know that language learning is a lifelong endeavor, and if you have a Linguafolio for yourself and are going through the same kinds of things, you know, using the biography components, using the self-assessment checklist, all of the things you do with Linguafolio, you'll have a better idea of how you can share that with your students and what they might be most interested in. So. Um, Take a moment and think about who your learners are. Next up is what learning is being supported with Linguafolio? Of course, language learning is being supported with Linguafolio. But more specifically, when we think about language learning, we break it down either into skills or domains like reading, writing, listening, and speaking, or the communication modes with world languages. So you have things like interpersonal communication, um, or interpretive communication, uh, like listening or viewing um, or reading. You also have presentational communication, which is formal speaking and writing. And don't forget that we have intercultural competence. And so there's lots of things that students are learning that is supported by using Linguafolio, because all of those things that I've just mentioned, including intercultural competence, are supported within Linguafolio and have components your students can use throughout their work in learning languages. Uh, the next question, the, the where. Where is each student's Linguafolio kept? Well, we know that Linguafolio belongs to each individual student. So they, at some point, take responsibility for where they keep it. Now, you can keep it electronically or you can keep it in paper. Um, given the times we're living in, um, there's something to be said, I think, for keeping things electronically, which also um, saves us a little bit on, on trees and so forth. But we're going to talk today about all the classroom materials and so that you can get Linguafolio as PDF documents, as Word documents, and even an, as an online tool if you want. 
And that'll help you think about as a teacher where each student's legal folio is kept. So consider for a moment, given who your learners are, where do you think will be a good place to keep that? If you have um, an online site, maybe a website for your class or even a, an LMS uh, learning management system that you're using for your students, that might be a good place for them to keep them. If they have folders and things like that, or if your students are more comfortable keeping them in a physical space, um, there's a way then to share those materials with them so that they can be printed out and kept truly in a folder. Um, when we think of folio, um, putting in a folder that can work with the student. The main goal, as I said, is to make sure that every student ultimately becomes responsible for their own lingo folio because they can take it with them as they go from class to class, uh, school to school, or even out into um, the world of work uh, or post-secondary instruction. Also, you want them to really take ownership of lingo folio. So it's important that they think about where they want to keep their lingo folio and work with you as a teacher to make that happen in the best way possible. The next question is when do you introduce different components of lingual folio? And the answer is it's really up to you and what your students need. We're going to talk today about two biography components of lingual folio that are good things to use right at the start, either the start of the school year or when you first introduce lingual folio to your students. Because there are different aspects of lingual folio and you need to think through what would be the best way to start so that students become familiar with lingual folio and really think about how they can use lingual folio to guide their language learning. For example, um, you might want to start out with these biography components because it helps students get focused on learning and goal setting, um, which is an integral part of lingual folio to think about how they can set goals and what they want to achieve in their language learning. Um, there's also the self-assessment checklist, but students need to understand what those checklists involve, um, how they link evidence to the checklist when they self-assess, and also to think about for you as a teacher, how what they're doing with lingual folio can inform your instruction because lingual folio is a formative assessment tool. It helps us as teachers understand where our students are at and where they might need to go next. Finally, the why or how part of this is why or how does lingual folio benefit learning and teaching? We've talked about a couple things, you know, that lingual folio is a formative assessment tool, so it informs instruction as we go. Uh, we've talked about it being belonging to students, so it benefits their learning by helping them become more autonomous in their learning, but also helping them become more goal focused and to think about what it is they can learn in a language and what they want to learn. And so if we pause for a moment and think about that, when we consider, you know, the question of the students always ask, why are we learning this or why are we doing that? Lingual folio can really help students answer that for themselves over time because then they know they're learning it so that they can become better at language, improve their skills in different domains or in different communication modes, and also think about how they can take that information outside of the classroom. Because lingual folio belongs to the student, it's not just something used in the classroom, it's something they can use anytime. And so as they learn things outside of the classroom, as they're immersed in the language, like we have with students who are English learners um, in North Carolina here, or as they're world language students are learning, they might have opportunities to use language outside the classroom that they would want to document in their lingual folio for themselves. Also, when students go to move on to the next grade level, um, course level, or school, or even out into post-secondary or the world of work, they can take their lingual folio with them to show others what it is they can do with the language. And so they can get a real benefit to their learning by being able to demonstrate what they can do with the language and how that will help them in whatever role they're going to. We've had several students report that they've used the folio for college placement uh, in courses there um, so that they were placed appropriately to continue to learn the language. We've also heard about um, students taking their lingual folio to job interviews and showing their supervisors what it is they can do with language and how they could help from that standpoint. And another benefit for lingual folio, particularly for um, students who are heritage speakers of a language, um, we want to make sure that their language is valued itself. And so whatever language they have at home, whether it's a commonly taught language in our schools, like let's say Spanish is or Chinese, or it's a less commonly taught language, um, we want to make sure that they can document their language learning in their first language, as well as their second or third or fourth languages that they're learning. And so lingual folio becomes a way to really empower students 
in, in their language learning across the board as they become bilingual and biliterate or multilingual and multiliterate. And so another benefit for them is that it really champions what they can do with language. I'll pause there for a moment and see if there are any questions about introducing students to Linguafolio as you've been thinking about the five W and H questions here. All right, I see one person says, uh, Caroline, what grade levels are the focus of Linguafolio geared for? Um, and the answer is you can use it with any grade level, K-12. Um, obviously, there may be pieces of Linguafolio, like the biography components uh, or different parts of it that you may want to introduce differently depending on the level of your students, maybe their age level or the developmental level or um, what you're trying to accomplish with them. Um, but it's made for any age student. Um, the Linguafolio that we use most commonly, the um, so we call it sort of the senior linguafolio versus the junior linguafolio or linguafolio junior. Um, I know that is routinely used uh, starting in third grade all the way up out into the world of work and in the secondary world. Um, sometimes people use linguafolio junior materials with very young students, or they might use the regular linguafolio materials, but use them more um, in small groups or with the class to go over rather than individuals if they're very, very young students. So they truly, Linguafolio can truly be used K-12. Um, and then, like I said, also in, in higher education, out in the world of work. And it really is important that we as teachers, as language learners, um, have our own Linguafolio as well. So it can be used professionally in that sense. Uh, and maybe even for professional development, if this is something you're working with your colleagues on, uh, as something to implement in your language learning classrooms. Sally, do you see any other questions or anything else we need to share about introducing students to Linguafolio? Um, I don't see any questions. And I just want to share, uh, well, we're talking in general about language learners, but when you are more specific about English learners, then are the same questions, you know, who your learners are when you're working on your student profile. And then when you help them understand why they're learning the language and how that will benefit them and how they can uh, start thinking about what they need to do with the language and what they need to do to reach those goals that you're helping them set in terms of language learning. And the when and where, let's talk about the where. It's important to, we are gonna show you the materials and what where you can use for Linguafolio. Uh, but also, if you're using, I know I'm doing this, for example, Google Classroom or Canvas, um, you can use these and upload it there so they can uh, work on their Linguafolio and have all their information there. And if it's an LMS that is approved by your district, then you know that their information is protected, that anything that they're sharing there is going to be only seen by you and their students so that's something important to keep in mind and why is you will see all the beauty of Linguafolio as we progress in the presentation today and we really want to help you understand how you can incorporate this in your instruction and how that will help your students understand uh, how their learning process is in terms of language and how they can make progress in their proficiency level so Thank you. And I don't see uh, questions if you don't uh, select all panelists. So don't forget so we can get um, support and answer your, your questions if you have any. Uh, we do have a question I see. Um, there, there's someone, Monica is asking, um, is Linguafolio a paid program? And the answer is no. Um, we're gonna show you how you can get your classroom materials for Linguafolio for free. Linguafolio was developed by, um, you know, state supervisors, so people at um, departments of education in, in various states um, from world languages and from ESL. And the commitment is to make it available for free to all teachers, for all students, and all language learners. And so um, on our North Carolina Linguafolio website, we've just downloaded the materials from the National Linguafolio website so that they're conveniently available to all of us. Um, but um, you can get them for free. You can download them as PDF documents or as 
um, Word documents. It's up to you and how you want to use them with your students, what you think might be best. Um, if you do get the Lingofolio Online or LFO app to use for your students, um, that has a small cost to students, like some apps do, right? Um, but if you get the LFO, the teacher accounts for LFO are free, but the students, um, I believe, pay about um, $2 or less um, for, for having the app. But you can always get Lingofolio um, for free as PDF and Word documents, too, and set it up in different ways. Uh, I also see another question. Does the Lingofolio Online, the app uh, version of Lingofolio, have a record button to record audio samples of the student's speech? And the answer is yes, it does. Uh, that's one of the things that's inherent in it. Um, it also has a video record, um, a way to link text, um, websites, all of those, those kinds of things, just like you would expect in any app to have. Um, for those who do Lingofolio with PDF or Word documents, of course, you can always embed links as evidence for things like um, audio samples or video samples or whatever you need, or text and things like that. Um, so um, is especially if you use it fully online, even with the PDF or Word document, you can make all of that available. Um, and most students have, either through the LMS they're using or through their own devices that they have, smart devices, um, a way to record audio and video quite easily to use in their Lingofolio. All right, I think we've got all the questions for now. So let's go on and um, take a look at the biography components we wanted to feature today. One of the things we wanted to do with this, the Linguafolio webinar series this year is to really focus in on the different parts of Linguafolio that are in the biography, in addition to the self-assessment checklist that you're probably quite familiar with. Um, these are two biography components that are often used at the beginning of the year. Uh, the one on the left is called How Do I Learn? And the one on the right is called Language Activities. And these are components that students fill out. Um, they can fill them out more than once, or they can fill them out in, in different pieces in different uh, times throughout the school year. So again, it's up to you as a teacher how you want to use this. And how old your students are and, and what kind of language learning environment you have may determine that for you. So what I'm going to do right now um, is I'm going to go ahead and um, put in our chat box access to both of these documents as both Word and PDF um, so that you can um, bring them up on your screen and uh, work with them as we're going through them. I really want you to think about, too, what you can do with them and how you might work best with them with the students that you currently have that you want to use Lingofolio with. Uh, and Sally, could I give you, um, can I get you to um, hand the controls over to me for just a second? Um, it looks like on our WebEx that you still have uh, keyboard and mouse control. Oh, let me see. Can you, if you double click, do you have access? You won't let me do it. It says that I need to click to get control, but I don't have control. Let me see if I can get out of here. Okay, do you have access now? It's strange, I, it, it won't let me do anything. Yes, it won't let me as well, so. Let me do something right quick. All right. Well, don't worry. We're going to go ahead and take a look at these. All right. I think I fixed it, Sally. I think we're good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put the links in the chat box so that you can have them. Um, just going to go ahead. There we go. So I've got the How Do I Learn document in both Word and PDF, as well as the language activities in both Word and PDF. So click on what you want. And these will be posted, by the way, with their links um, on the Lingofolio webinar series page after our broadcast. So you can get them there as well. But let's start with the How Do I Learn document, that first one that I sent. Um, this is often the choice uh, to start with for teachers when they're introducing Lingofolio to their students and also when they're starting the year out. 
Um, it sort of begins at the beginning, if you will. One thing I will tell you is there's a series of teacher videos, uh, individual teachers sharing how they use Lingofolio in their classroom on our Lingofolio website. And there are several of the teachers that in those videos share that they do in fact start with the how do I learn and they kind of walk you through it. So with the how do I learn, it really is just having students evaluate for themselves and sort of assess how do they learn, what works best for them. It always uses the same scale, so I, that's why I've said check the scale. Uh, they can either check the box that's four, meaning they frequently do that, three, meaning they sometimes do it, two, meaning they seldom do it, or one, meaning they never do it. And the first part is begin with organizing your work. And so this is a really good one for students as they're getting started, and maybe even better this year as we have students, some of whom are learning remotely, some of whom are learning face-to-face, -face, and some of whom are switching back and forth depending on the day or the week uh, rotation that they're on. So in the organizing the work, it really asks students to think about how they organize their workspace. Um, do they check to see that they have everything with them, they're ready? Do they have a, a day planner or assignment folder? Do they manage their time by, by creating a daily or weekly schedule? Do they have the right supplies for class or the assignment? Have they scheduled specific times to study and complete their assignments? And do they set goals and periodically review them to see if they can achieve them? So it's a good way to get students thinking. And as you might guess, it's also a good way to give them some tips and ideas that if they struggle with organizing their work or they're just getting started, here are some things that they can do. Um, even if they don't ever do them right now, they put a one, they could move that up to sell them or sometimes, and that could really help them out. Next up on the how do I learn is a whole section on learning vocabulary. That's important, obviously, in any language learning environment. And again, we have some things that, that could be very helpful and could give students ideas. So about use, making and using flashcards or using uh, their text or dictionary as resources. Maybe they group words by themes or work on new words uh, based on what they already know. Um, another part of the how do I learn is looking at their pronunciation. Obviously, this is for spoken languages, um, but it can be used in different ways for sign languages. So it, when it looks at their pronunciation, it talks about maybe repeating words or, or watching things like podcasts or CDs and listening to audio files. Um, it also looks at recording themselves and playing that back or maybe uh, listening to radio broadcasts or television broadcasts to work on their pronunciation. The next section, the how do I learn, uh, looks at first listening skills. And again, it, it looks at things like um, how do they get the details and so forth? Do they look for keywords? It goes on to reading, reading for understanding. So look at knowing the purpose of reading, um, taking notes, writing down words they don't know and want to learn. Um, and then it moves on to writing, where it talks about editing and proofreading their writing as they learn the language. Um, so maybe they use an outline, a storyboard, how do they organize their writing? Um, do they use the appropriate voice and that sort of thing? So there's lots of things for them to think about. And again, something you may want to share with them at different times during their learning um, in order to um, use it most effectively with the students you have. There's also a section on this um, component about structural accuracy, really looking carefully at things like grammar rules and explaining grammar in their own terms and becoming more familiar with a grammar rule and applying it appropriately. That's, of course, probably most critical, critical in things like presentational communication or um, formal speaking and writing uh, that they do. Next section is about staying in the target language. We always want to be in the target language during class or students are getting exposed to the language they're learning, whether that's English or a world language. Um, and, and so it kind of looks at does the student themselves, are they boosting their own use of the language by staying in the target language? And finally, there's some tips about sort of language learning in general. Um, do they understand some things about learning languages like that not everything can be translated word for word? Or do they um, try to remember frequently used or common kinds of words and phrases? And so uh, there's a lot there to consider in the how do I learn piece. The other component is called language activities. And I like this as a teacher because, again, this is a way for students to really think about what they could be doing with language and a place for them to document it as they do it. Um, so rather than use a scale, this just uses a simple list of what have they done. The first thing on there is exchanges with speakers of the language. So like letters or email and telephone. Of course, in our modern world, um, text messages might be on there um, or you know, social media posts or something like that could be something that they use with, with the speakers of, of the language they're learning. 
uh, participation in language clubs or even culture clubs or, or school clubs of some kind that help them use their language um, in different settings can be documented there. They can also write down language activities like presentations or projects carried out in the language. And this might be something that if you're a world language teacher, maybe doing a virtual project with a group in um, another part of the world that they could document. Or if you've got English learners, it could be presentations and projects that they're working on um, with um, their classmates, their peers in the same school. The next section lets them list films they viewed, either in the original version or plays in the language. Um, and the, the type, the title, the actors, and especially now with all their streaming services and the access that students have, this might be a really good way for them to do some language activities outside of the classroom. There's also a place for them to list magazines, newspapers, or journals that they've read in the language. Uh, and again, to list those titles, how often they read them, what kind of media it is. Um, we have a lot of authentic resources online that students can access, as well as in print. And so there might be a lot of things that they would be interested in, in looking at. There's, likewise, there's a place where they can list books they have read. Uh, it's quite an accomplishment for especially an early language learner, a young person to start listing books that they've read in the target language that they're learning. And so there's a place to record that. There's also a place here in language activities that talks about participation in conferences or publications. And this might be something that is more towards um, an older student or maybe even a teacher who's doing their language, uh, doing a lingual folio for themselves. But how do they participate in conferences? How do they publish things like um, different presentations maybe um, done virtually or at a conference? Um, how do they contribute? Are they a co-presenter or the main presenter? What kind of media do they use and how comfortable are they with it? And finally, like in most Linguafolio documents, there's always an other column where the teacher can fill in or the student can fill in other ways and other language activities in this case that they use to build their language skills. So that's the language activities component. So sadly, um, we're up for our next Mentimeter question. All right, and I'm back. I have to leave the meeting. I hope I think I don't have control anymore, so you can help me okay. with the slides. And just briefly about the two components we have reviewed, the how do I learn and language activity. Remember that with English learners, um, it doesn't matter in which proficiency level they are. If they are newcomers, recently arrived students, this will help them uh, start. Uh, setting their goals and organizing their learning, identifying what they know, even if it's the minimum, then they know and they feel excited about all the things that they can learn. And this might help you also with your content area teachers because then they know, okay, this student might not be able to produce the language right now, uh, but they are understanding, they already know more things in the language and they have this set of goals they can do statements that might help them while they're teaching their content area and how they can incorporate that language, that academic language that is going to help the student as well. And the same for long-term else. They um, might, you know, that how do I learn, start talking about the language domains, the listening, reading, and speaking, but they, it also helps them be more aware of the structural accuracy uh, and knowing that they need to use the academic language that, yes, they might have mastered the social language, but they need to work more on that technical vocabulary and those specific expressions that might help them uh, in their other content areas. So it's really important to have these. And with the activities, all those activities that they can have uh, in which they use the language, that's going to help them a lot. So now that we have the uh, Mentimeter, again, if you can go to your phone and type menti.com and enter the code, I won't move anything for now so you can have access to the code. And we have these two options this time. So which biography component would you use first? And we have how do I learn? And number two, languages, language activities. So which one of those do you think will help you start introducing Linguafolio to your students and getting them uh, used to taking um, a conscious effort and owner 
and own in their language learning. So we're going to see, do I have access, Anne-Marie, or should I? Uh, I don't think so, but but it's okay. We'll have access here in a second. Awesome. Um, the best thing to do, like she said, is go to minty.com and then type in the code number that you see on the screen, 1900625, and answer which of these biography co components would you use first? And while people are getting started, let's cover a few questions, sadly, that are in the question box. Um, several people have asked, Carrie and Karen, are these checklists available in different languages? Um, and specifically, they was asked about Spanish, so I'm guessing you, you must be te either teaching Spanish or teaching students who speak Spanish already. Um, so the answer is, it depends on the, the document. Um, we do have all the self-assessment checklists for Linguafolio available in um, 10 different languages besides English. And that's something, by the way, that's accessible if you get the online version of Linguafolio, the uh, LFO, Linguafolio online app, um, that's available to students. Um, very few of the biography components have actually been translated, but if that's something that you want as a teacher, think about how you would use these different biography components and how you could break them down and share them with students um, in different languages if you wanted to do it that way. Um, I also have a, um, a question that says, how does this uh, biography component look for kindergarten? And the answer is, it's up to you. Um, as we said, you might want to share um, these different components of Linguafolio in different ways with your students. And so sometimes with very young learners like kindergarten or first grade or second grade, uh, when we do biography components like you saw here, the how do I learn or the language activities, we often do them more as a class or small group. Um, so you could you know, picture your students sitting around um, either online with you, maybe at a Zoom session of some kind or at some, uh, or in your classroom. And they could still use that same scale about, you know, how four is they frequently do something, three is they often do it, two is seldom and one is never. Um, you could go over those as a class and kind of explain what they are, and then they could do those, show you the number they're at um, just by holding up their hand and showing different numbers. Um, or maybe you have some other way that you sort of an audience response with your students. Correct. And All these right. questions, Anne Marie, um, bring an opportunity. We have at the end of the presentation, we're going to share about the sponsorships that we have. And we always have projects for these teachers that are sponsored to an activity or an event. So maybe one opportunity is if we want to start working on the Spanish version of some of these resources that are available, that would be something really great to do. So that would be another option. If, we, if you are interested, we can uh, talk later and see if we can make this happen. Yeah, that's always a great idea, Sally. I know that um, many of the things we have with Lincoln Folio have come from work by teachers in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, North Carolina was involved with the first version of Lingua Folio that was out as a pilot. Uh, North Carolina was the one that led the way in making sure that ESL learners had self-assessment checklists and things in other languages. So that would be a great situation to be in. Uh, before we go to our um, Mentimeter poll and see the results, I'm looking at, to see what other questions we have. Um, one person is asking, do we have Linguafolio in North Carolina, like all of these documents that we're sharing? The answer is yes. yes. And we're going to be talking about that here later on in the, the broadcast about where you can get all of these classroom materials, uh, like we've shared with you with the two biography components. But you can get the whole biography and all the other components of Linguafolio. So let's go ahead and go to our um, poll, Sally, and see where we're at. Okay, I see we have 30 responses. And we have 70% of you who like to start with how do I learn? And then 27% with the language activities. So, and it is not, that is not right or wrong answer with this. It depends on how you think their students are going to start using Linguafolio. And if you maybe have started already, then you feel like, okay, we can start with language activities because we have already worked on these, they are already uh, maybe following a routine now that we're working online and they have those interactions. So that's something that you can start adding there. But then maybe how do I learn? Because that will help them have that starting point, understand it. And maybe if English, I am talking about ESL um, English learners, if they already have access to scores, then they will understand their scores better 
after they go through the how do I learn process, the checklist, and they start seeing all the different components and identifying, okay, so maybe I got this scores because this is what I can do in the language. And then they identify those other items that they need to work a little more. So it's great. We have 73% and I don't see any more responses. And Marie? Okay, that looks good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on. Okay. So I'm watching our time, so I think we're going to just jump ahead. Um, but we do appreciate all the comments you've shared in the chat box already with us. And let's go ahead and see where you can get all of the Linguafolio Classroom materials that we've been talking about. So the ones that you've seen, as well as many others. And so, sadly, I'm going to pass the control over to you one more time. I think we'll uh -oh. we've learned how to manage it better. So there you go. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Okay, so I think I have control. So I should be able to. Okay, so we have our lingua folio uh, for North Carolina home, uh, a Google site, and you will have access to all these resources. And if you go and explore right now, maybe you're going to miss some of the great information that we have, but just make sure that you write that Bitly link. And then later you can go and explore either word languages or ESL. And if you are interested in the lingua folio online for NC, uh, you can go and explore that option as well. But we're going to click it for now. And remember the Bitly, I'm going to share the long URL on the chat and then the Bitly. So you can access with either link. And you will have all the information that we have shared today. So in the ceiling we call it home. And there you go. So now you have both. Oh, let me see something wrong here. I am going to click on word languages. And while this open, I'm going to share a quick link. I think I missed one little detail and that's what you won't be able to access that link. Okay. Okay, it's corrected now. So now we see the lingua folio for word languages uh, material. So all these materials are on our, our Google site. And then you will see the three components. We have three main components. Let me see if I can scroll. Thank you. Uh, we have the biography, and we share today two of those components, but there are more that you can use. And we have the dossier and the passport. So these all work together. You can start working on some and you don't have to use all of them, uh, but progressively you will see how all of those components come together and help the students. And we have, uh, let me see if I can scroll down, it's a little slow. But then you will see the description of the different uh, components of Lingua Folio and how you can use them and how you can help your students understand the use of lingua folio as they become more autonomous and uh, learn how to set their own goals. And then, and Marie was mentioning early, you will have access to both the PDF uh, documents and the Word document documents. So you have these two versions and you can use either one. And if you're using um, an LMS, we said before, then you can upload this because you can download this, then put it in the system that you're using in your school district. If you are using, for example, uh, other uh, software in your school district that has been approved, for example, CISO, Flipgrid, other different digital tools, then you can incorporate that. And as you start collecting the evidence, and that was one of the questions, how do, do we have the recording? we have this option for video, then you can use those tools already in place in your districts to collect the evidence for your with your students as you start using these different documents. So we have, this is really well organized and this is kudos to Anne-Marie because she took the time to organize every single document and you will see how we have it. And then at the bottom, you will have the can-do statements so we know that all the materials for lingua folio are aligned to the can-do statements. If you are a word languages teacher, 
they are aligned to the actual can-do statements, and you will see the links so you can access. And if you are an ESL teacher, these have been aligned to the WIDA can-do statements. And we also mentioned how they are aligned to the uh, Common European uh, Framework, but then we made that crosswalk with the WIDA standards and the WIDA can-do descriptor. So you will be, this will be in the language you are familiar with when you start exploring. And we have also the pro uh, proficiency grids and all the different uh, options. We have the proficiency levels. So you will see in the materials, for example, if I scroll down a little bit for word languages, uh, different proficiency levels. They have novice, superior, distinguished. Uh, in the ESL world, we have emerging, beginning, developing. So we'll see in a second in the other page, and you will see how they align to the language that we use and how all the different documents have been uploaded. And then you have the documents, the whole list, and then you have them uh, one by one. So you can have access to either, you can download, for example, if you're creating your own portfolio, and that's something that I would recommend, and we always talk about this in our other sessions, as a teacher, if you speak another language, or if you, maybe you don't, you're not uh, fluent, but you took some classes. If you go through the process of uh, assessing, self-assessing your language learning, you will see how Lingvafolio helps you, helps you, and you can like, oh, this is what I know in the language, but if I want to be able to communicate uh, about another topic, this is what I need to learn. So it's it's beautiful. And even when we say, for example, oh, I just took four semesters of French or four semesters of uh, Mandarin, then you can see what process and where you are in the language. And this is easier for ESL for our English learners because they already have the access scores and that's kind of their starting point and that helps them. And if they're new students and you have a screen them even with a provisional screener, then you have that information and you can help them. So we have um and then I'm going to click, let me see if I can do it. Uh, I want to go to the ESL Yeah, thank you, Anne Marie. I think I'm trying, but um, okay, awesome. And if oh, did I click the wrong one? I think I got excited that it was working, and I clicked on the wrong one. There you go. ESL. So for a, English as a second language. So again, you will see the three components. Let me see. You will see the three components again: biography, the dossier and the passport. Okay. okay, and then you can download these and you don't have to print all these documents if you don't want to. And now that we're doing it virtual, then again, you can just upload it to your LMS and be able to use it. But I wanted to see how everything is aligned and you have access to all the documents, and you can download the whole folder or just one by one, and then you will see how they are aligned and how we have made the crosswalk. For example, in ESL with the we uh, can do a statement and with the proficiency level. So you see these documents are now entering, beginning, developing, expanding, and this gives some samples of what the students can do with the language at these different proficiency levels. But these are not all they can do. These are just some samples that you can use to inform what you are doing already. Because there's something good about Linguafolio, you can integrate it in, implement it in your instruction with what you are already doing, because then when you're talking about those language activities, that's what you are doing with your students, how you're helping them, and then your content area teachers, how they're helping them learn and use the language of that specific area. So I'm gonna go back to this and see if we can, okay. So the third option, that we have is the Linguafolio online for North Carolina. And this uh, was developed by Castles, and they offer, uh, they have all the setup, the platform is for North Carolina. So if you access, you log in and you create a free teacher account, 
then you can see uh, you might find the list of schools. You can identify your school district, your school, and you will be able to create your account. And once you access, you will also have the chance to create a student account that is kind of like a mock account. So you can see what your students will be able to see. And then you can help, uh, you can assign the can do statements to your students based on the instruction that you're providing. If you want to align those two, and you can also help them do it themselves. So once they have completed the self-assessment, then they can go and select those can-do statements as well. And then once you start collecting the evidence, then is when uh, we have uh, the, the castles, they have in this platform, the, the fee, I think it was, didn't we have a special discount for North Carolina and Maria? I think we have. Yes, we do. It's um, about a dollar fifty per student account, um, and so it's definitely under two dollars. I know that, so it's fairly you know, economical. And you know, those, those monies just go to maintain the materials on the server um, because Castle at the University of Oregon does that. It also maintains the security for students who are working online, and we know how important that is uh, when you're using an online tool like this. Correct, and these will give you all the. Um, as uh, Mary said, you have the platform, all the evidence is in one place for you to review. Your students can see it, you can see their progress. And then once you start working on the passport, that is what they share with others so they can show what they have learned, what they have accomplished, and their goals in the language. Then you will have all those components right there. So, you, if you're an ESL teacher, you can talk to your L coordinator and see if there is some funding that you can use to be able to get some uh, accounts, student accounts, and get your students uh, using this. And as you start recording, because they're going to use uh, the audio, they can upload any media, uh, audio, audio, uh, video, or images and writings, then that will help them also practice for their annual assessment for the access test because then they're gonna get used to do this online. And now more than ever, they, they are using all these tools. So what we have in this page, uh, we have shared the instructor tutorial and st student tutorials. So if you're interested in exploring LinguaFolio uh, online for North Carolina, you will see these tutorials. It says how you go through how uh, this was developed, then how you can sign up and log in, how you can add and remove students, then how you can create your own student account, because um, once you have your student account, the teacher account only works for the web um, version of the platform. But if you want to see it in the app, then you will have to create your student account. So then it's two different interfaces. So then we have these tutorials so you can go and, and explore and the tutorials are very easy to understand. They have all the graphics and they show you exactly where every detail is. So it's, it's easy to follow. The, the directions are really easy. And once you share with your students, that's really easy as well for them. And then this could be one of your lessons, helping them navigate this, this system as they start working on LinguaFolio. It works in different, um, systems, operating systems. So that will be something good. And let me see if I, I think we're running out of time. Yeah, I was, um, I, let's go ahead and condense some things. Um, one person had asked something about the materials. They said, you know, they know there are several websites that have LinguaFolio materials, which is the best website to use. And we may be biased, but we think our, um, <laughs> our, LinguaFolio, our, our North Carolina LinguaFolio website is the best. And the reason is because We've specifically designed it so that all the materials you would need for your classes, whether you're a world language teacher, an ESL teacher, whether you want to use um, the LinguaFolio online or you just want to use the Word or PDF documents, everything is in one place for you here. Um, some of the other websites, you would have to go to several different ones and have to kind of know where to look. Here, it's all in one place. And as Sally has shown with this website, um, it's fairly easy to navigate using the tabs that are there and that you can always see. And so you can always get to what you need. Um, for your, your use of LinguaFolio and your implementation in the classroom. So we've designed it just with you in mind for that reason. So given our time, Sally, let's go ahead and um, jump past this next part. 
Um, we, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about cell competency, social emotional learning, but we will save that for the next uh, broadcast we have. Okay. Um, so let me just skip real quick. Actually, let me um, kind of jump ahead. And what we wanted to share is at the department, we are working on the social emotional learning competencies by, uh, in every one, uh, content area. So we wanted to share what word languages and ESL have been doing on this and how you can incorporate uh, some samples and make those connections with lingua folio. Um, but yeah, we're going to skip these and let's go. I think so, we have the control again. Nope, it actually says you do, Sally. So I'm trying to get control back. And I'm not sure why it will not give it to me, but. Um, okay, which slide do we want to go? And I'll try to do it. Let's go um, to our wrap up. Just keep, we need to scroll down towards the bottom. Oh, great. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about um, a little bit about the, the PD first, or let's just skip, I guess, right to the upcoming conferences. Sorry. Let's go ahead to that. Okay. Yeah, and time. Wow. I can't believe we're out of time, but. Well, there's lots to learn about Linguafolio. If you're not familiar with it, as you can see, everything is posted on our website. Um, we have information about the Canvas course that you can take. It's the Introduction to Linguafolio training that's available through our statewide system, the NESIS and home base, as well as available to anyone who wants it outside of North Carolina. Um, we also have some upcoming conferences where people will be presenting about Linguafolio. Uh, one of them is the annual fall conference from FLANC, the Foreign Language Association of North Carolina. Uh, that'll be virtual this year, uh, starting on the evening of October 9th, which is a Friday evening, so there's no missing classes or, or time from students. Um, and it'll go um, Friday evening through Sunday with concurrent sessions, um, research roundtables, and pre-conference workshops. Also, um, you can apply for a beginning teacher scholarship from FLANG so that you can go to the conference for free um, and attend online for free. So those are due September 15th. Um, and I would encourage you to apply for those if you are a beginning teacher in your first, second, or third year of instruction. Also, um, some other upcoming conferences are the La Cosa Dual Language Conference. Um, it was originally scheduled for New Mexico, but it also has gone virtual, and it will be um, in early November, November 4th through the 7th. Um, as well as the ACTFL uh, virtual convention. ACTFL is the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages. We talk about lingual folio and talk about things like the necessful ACTFL uh, can do statements that are used in them. That's our national organization. And so their virtual convention is November 20th through the 22nd. And they also have some awards where you can go to the conference uh, for a reduced fee. Um, so you can get an ACTFL stipend award. Uh, again, if you're a beginning teacher or a first time attendee at ACTFL, they also have um, stipend awards for um, people who are full time undergraduate or graduate students, as well as um, people of color. Uh, so you can apply for one of those if you're interested. And I get to share the great news, the happy news, and is the ESL Title Three. Uh, team has been able to offer a sponsorship this year. So we have a set of uh, events that we're going to sponsor. And Marie was mentioning some that are very specific to language teachers. Uh, but we have, if you, when you get, get access, you will see the presentation slide deck. And we have in a couple of slides the different events that we are offering. And this is open to word language teachers as well. So it's an ESL Title III opportunity, but we want to build capacity and we have offered this to content area teachers, word languages, so we want you to apply. So we have um, our application closes on September 25th. So we will recommend you if you just go and look at the presentation, they, uh, the link will take you to our website, our Google site, and you will see the video recording with all the information that you need. So you decide basically what we do, and I'll be right quick, is if you want to attend an event, then you apply for the sponsorship. And you, if you are selected, 
then we pay for your, we reimburse your registration fee. So Anne-Marie was telling you about some opportunities to get reduced uh, fees, but if you apply for the sponsorship and you are one of our D's, then once you pay and you attend, you participate, and then you work on one of the projects and the projects are very simple. This year we have created a five to seven minute video on one strategy that you learned during the event. Or if there is a group interested in working on the Spanish version of the uh, hand, how do I learn uh, handouts that we shared today, that would be a great thing to do. Um, and then you will pay for your registration fee. And then after the event, we will reimburse that money uh, to you. And if you need a substitute, because these events, we are sponsoring this semester only virtual events. If you still need, um, substitute teacher because you well you can't have your students and participate in the event then we will cover that substitute as well so i just invite you to look at the presentation uh look at the video and then look at the application and just fill it out and we have extended this opportunity so please uh if you also want to look at the samples of the different projects that other teachers have developed in the previous years we also link here the special edition that we call giving back to our professional learning network and you will see samples of what other teachers have been doing. We have a couple of projects about lingua folio, so we invite you to, to look at this. All right, so lots of opportunities there coming up uh, to do some professional learning and professional development. All right, well, let's wrap up and I see some questions we're about to answer from the questions box. Um, so the archives from this broadcast will be posted on our Linguafolio webinars page within the next week. Um, th those archives will include a recording, uh, the slides you've seen in three different formats. And by the way, all the links to things like the scholarship applications or, or whatnot are in those slides. They're embedded and they're in the presenter's notes. And then we'll link the handouts and links as well that we use so that you'll have those. Um, I do see a couple questions in here with that. Um, also know that by virtue of attending today, we will at, make sure your email address is on our NC Linguafolio listserv. And so as we share information about things like the scholarships um, and the sponsorships to apply to those, those will also go on the listserv separate from our broadcast today so that you can have access to them um, and then um, apply if you are interested. All right, uh, last, of course, um, we will remind you individuals who participate in the live broadcast of our webinar can earn that one contact hour towards the CEU for license renewal. It will come in the form of an email with an attached certificate approximately two weeks from today. And please note, as always, um, if you're in a district or a charter school, you may need to get permission to use those contact hours for licensure renewal. Uh, you need to check with your, your local agency there. And that wraps it up for us today. Um, you can always contact us. I'm Amory Gunter and my colleague here is Sally Stocks. You see our email addresses and also our contact information, of course, is on the Linguafolio website that you can reach us at. Um, I do see one more question that I thought we should answer all as a group before we close out our recording. Um, Maria wants to know, can students on Plan C be part of regular Linguafolio or should the school move to like the LFO for NC? Uh, if they're on uh, the plan C where they're all remote instruction. It really depends, Maria, on anybody else who's thinking about that question. Um, consider what would be best for your students and what you want to do. Um, as we said uh, several times, if you're using a, a learning management system like Canvas or one of the others, um, you can often share whatever type of lingua folio, like with the Word documents or the PDF documents you want, or you can also use the LFO. Uh, it just depends on what you think would work best for your learners. I'm looking, sadly, one last time in the questions box to see if you want to answer any questions um, for everyone here and catch them on the recording. I do see a couple people saying they are going to do some more research. They're going to take a look at the website. We always want you to do that. Um, there's a lot there, um, and it's designed specifically for you. So if you are looking for something and can't find it, be sure and email us because we will make it more prominent or rearrange it somehow so that it's easier for you to locate what you need. And that is maybe a question. Do we grade the students' lingua folio? Somebody is concerned about time and how it will take to grade their students' lingua folio. So what would be your response to that, Anne-Marie? 
Actually, there's no grading in Linguafolio mm -hmm. at all. Linguafolio is um, a, a formative assessment tool, and formative assessment means, of course, no grading. The purpose of formative assessment exactly. of any kind is to get feedback for the student to get feedback, for the teacher to get feedback, and to alter instruction as needed, um, either for individual students or for the whole group. Um, so it's a formative assessment tool. It's something that belongs to the student, the Linguafolio does, um, and it informs everyone, but no one grades. And so it's something that students become responsible for themselves and teachers guide them in that as a way to develop those uh, autonomous learning skills or self-management right. skills that we want all students to have. Oh, and I see a quick question about how do I access the listserv? Good news, we will just add you to the, the NC Linguafolio listserv. But you can also um, add yourself to any of the listservs from NCDPI um, as part of our email to you um, in the next week or so about these materials being available online and posted. I will include information about how you can sign up for all listservs, but I will go ahead and sign everybody up today uh, who is here for the NC Lingua Folio listserv. Okay, I don't see any more questions on my side to all panelists. So. I think we're good and please just send us an email if you have any questions. We are always helping and we, we love that our teachers use these tools. So please feel free to contact us and, and ask. All right, and we thank you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure sharing with Linguafolio with you and answering your questions. And do contact us in, with any other questions you have about Linguafolio. Uh, as you start to use this tool or continue to use this tool with students in your classroom. Have a great evening and we will talk with you soon, hopefully. Ooh, arigato gozaimasu. Merci. Ah, oh, yes, we're getting thank yous in multiple languages. Excellent. There you go. Always like to see that. <laughs>